What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down Wednesday's 10-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings, FanDuel, and our sponsor, Yahoo, where we have a free roll posted for you. As you will see in the main lobby, a 1K NBA Slate Starter Listener League. Uh, but I mean, it's open to the public here right now. We're going to be working on some different stuff, but if you jump over to Yahoo and you haven't signed up, do that first, because then you get a free month of Osmo plus platinum. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but Ryan, we have our own free roll. We've made it. Yeah, we've, uh, definitely moved up. Uh, big thanks to Yahoo for giving, uh, out a thousand dollar free roll. I know, um, we'll be working on, uh, some of the kinking out the, uh, price structure and whatnot, uh, but it's a free roll. I recommend you guys to sign up and enter that free roll right away and uh, get your day started on Yahoo. Uh, shout out to them. Thank you so much for sponsoring the Slate Starter. And with the free roll, uh, the promise that was in the works, please do drop those reviews for us. Those mm-hmm. five-star reviews across all platforms go a long way, and it helps us continue to do the Slate Starter podcast on a night-in and night-out basis. I mean, we're tired. I mean, I've done a bazillion shows today. Ryan's made a bazillion lineups. Uh, It's like pinball out there in the NBA DFS streets. It's like pinball in my brain, too. I've got a headache. But I'm ready to ride, and I'm doing that because we love doing this content for you. We love putting together, and I get to hang out with my buddy Ryan. It's really not too hard whatsoever. But, uh, Ryan, let's talk the NBA DFS slate that's ongoing here for Tuesday, and then we'll get into Wednesday's 10-gamer. Lots of points are being scored. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of expected when you had two shorthanded teams running a tight rotation in the Pelicans and the Raptors and everyone was priced way too cheap for their productive roles. Great matchups across the board. They all smashed. And yet again, uh, just not having enough Joel Embiid. Oh, is going to come back to haunt me. Uh, we saw Robert Williams explode in limited minutes in a uh, matchup where they, I believe they won by 50 points. Yeah, They were all 50 points at one point, I believe. And then uh, Kate Cunningham showed why he was the number one overall pick. I had quite a bit of, my, of him on Yahoo and FanDuel, uh, just not enough on DraftKings. There was guys like who, in the late night hammer tonight, guys priced around him like D'Angelo Russell with no Pat Bev, mm-hmm. Anthony Edwards, CJ McCollum, who just I thought projected a little better than Cade over there. But on FanDuel, he was, I thought it was an excellent play. I just had way too much Lamella Ball as he drowns me yet again. Uh, really disappointing uh, with Lamella Ball. Uh, he's kind of. Just not producing at the greatest fantasy rate. I thought with no Gordon Hayward, things could look up. He had a great stat line. It just wasn't a great fantasy stat line. Problem is, Miles Bridges took a step up. And then Terry Rozier is always going to be a ball-dominant guard. And I think last year, being a rookie, the team, once Gordon Hayward got hurt halfway through the season, he was able to really... like He, he was good early on in limited minutes, but then he started, and Gordon Hayward was out, and he went nuts. Now, you have Gordon Hayward out, so there's that, but... Two other things are happening where Terry Rozier is playing a bunch of minutes and being far more involved and and doing phenomenal things. And then Miles Bridges has just gone to another stratosphere. So I think that might be part of it as opposed to just LaMelo Ball getting worse. But at the same time, it's very frustrating, no doubt about it. Oh, looky there. He's on this slate. So we can throw more money at this idiot. Uh, no, I like him very much, and you know, I still think he's good. I guess it's maybe a tighter gap between him or Anthony Edwards than we would have thought before. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's... It, I'm trying I, to make think, myself feel better, Ryan. Please help me. I do think it'll just like work out for both teams uh, type of situation, uh, looking down the line potentially. Yeah. Yeah, I was just disappointed. I was really high on LaMelo Ball. Uh, I really thought I, I he's chasing that all-star narrative, and I've just been chasing that along with him, and... It hasn't really panned out for me, but you know what? Uh, I'll be back at it tomorrow again with LaMelo Ball. Yeah, well, we're going to be back at it with a lot of things. A lot of teams on a back-to-back. We went from a nine-gamer tonight, which, again, everybody exploded for a zillion points. You had Pelicans that were cheap. You had uh, a million studs that it seems like every stud in the early session of games hit. So, like, even Luca is starting to go nuts in the evening here as we're getting this podcast going. They're just starting their first quarter, and he's off to a hot start once again. But, like... Man, I, this is going to be one of the highest scoring slates you're ever going to see on any day. Uh, but guess what? We've got pretty similar situations here. We're talking about Toronto once again. I'm not sure if Fred Van Vliet and Scotty Barnes end up out again. But we have San Antonio, which was less appealing when we got closer to lock there, of course. But uh, was still a spot that you could definitely look at for some value. And 
the biggie in the early window, especially if you're going to have uh, the same kind of situation here. Toronto, hello, what's going on? And maybe I already said them. I don't think I did, though. Yeah, I did. I'm tired. Let's go to it. You ready to get going, my dude? That's right. All right, to the top end. We're looking at a Brooklyn spot where James Harden, back-to-back, uh, I mean, he's got to be playing, you would assume, and you got to be thinking that James Harden is somebody to invest in at the top end, facing Denver at home. Uh, Harden and Jokic on back-to-backs, very, very popular. Uh, if you have the money, if there's going to be savings, we're going to want to go up to them. Luca 11-1, he's on going right now. Trey Young, John Morant. DeJounte Murray, 9,800, him sub 10K. It's kind of fascinating to be seeing and looking at there. But I will say, one guy who's playing just an absurd, obscene rate right now is Chris Paul. 40-plus minutes now, last two games. 54.5, 61.25. Tough Utah spot, but made a little bit easier because Rudy Gobert has already been ruled out. We're going to have a lot of Utah value at this point guard, shooting guard position. Not the Utah value we had two days ago, but like legitimately... It's going to get crazy. They're trying to assess this entire slate once more. Ryan, talk to me about the card spot on DraftKings. So with a nine-game slate being today and a 10-game slate being coming in tomorrow, there will be a handful of teams on a back-to-back. So uh, if you thought there was a lot of news today, there will be more tomorrow. So uh, just keep an eye on that situation. Uh, and if you don't like news, I suggest you to uh, change your opinion on news. But uh, looking at uh, the top end of shooting guard, uh, top end of guard, James Harden looks great. Luka looks great. Luka in a great matchup versus Portland. Uh, James Harden is just fantastic. He'll continue to be great uh, at home when there's no Kyrie Irving. DeJounte Murray, uh, 9,800 in a Memphis matchup. Him and John Moran are going to go back and forth in that game. It's going to be an exciting game. I don't mind if you want to spend uh, down there. The reason why uh, Chris Paul is playing more minutes is there's no campaign. He's getting that extra rotate. That uh, campaign's rotation is getting sprinkled around across the board there. So that's why these Phoenix guys Alfred are Payton's getting ruled. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. I just wanted to interrupt you, actually, too. Continue. <laughs> yeah, Alfred Payton is someone who I thought might get some extra minutes, but it's just his minutes have been very low. Now, in the mid-tier, uh, there are a ton of guys who have tournament winning upside. Levine uh, against Toronto. Uh, I believe Tyler Hero is another great option. I believe... Uh, Kyle Lowry continues to be away for personal reasons. Now, looking all the way down, I like going to Derek White in a Memphis matchup, 5,900. Cole Anthony's now sub 7K. He's not as great as Jalen Suggs has made a return, and he's been playing really well. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, if he's going to play, that'd be really nice at 4,600. I do expect him to return. I think he practiced in full this morning. Now, if you want to look for a 3K guy who has guard eligibility, eligibility it'd be chatty osman if you're just looking for a guy who's 3k uh his him and his teammate rondo are both 3k i mean if you're just looking for if there's no value that really opens up which i think will uh so i think targeting those guys is fine if there's no value but they're not that exciting another guy uh, who i'll be continuing to be over the field on is lamella ball at 8100 dollars Somebody who burned me big time today at the guard spot, Terrence Davis. I probably ended up with a little bit too much 6K there for him, and he banged his head on the floor. I doubt he's going to play. Buddy Heald exists. He's 6,400. Probably not the most appealing spot, but if you have no De'Aaron Fox and you have no Terrence Davis, I like him, and it's weird to say because this is the NBA Slate Starter Podcast where all I do is shit on Buddy Heald and... (laughs) I'm going to roster this idiot tomorrow. To the guard spot, we go over on FanDuel. Top end, Luka Doncic 11-4. DeJounte Murray 10-3 there. James Harden 10-2 is just a dumb, 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 dumb price tag. John Morant 9,900. Chris Paul 9,700. Trey Young 9,500. Lots of options there, but it starts for me. Devin Booker 9,200. I really absolutely love. Well, I mean, it doesn't start because I have tons of interest in... uh, you know, James Harden, that ridiculous price tag. But what really stands out to you over on FanDuel, Ryan? Yeah, it's James Harden, 10 to. Uh, that's definitely a priority play there. Uh, I like targeting Sacramento. But Trey Young at 9,500 makes a lot of sense. LaMelo Ball has fallen e- even more. He's now down to 7,600. I like going to him. I like going to Karis LeVert on the other side as well. As Utah continues to be out, out of guys, I think Jordan Clarkson is fine to go to. I think Tyler Hero is elevated, but okay. 
other guys that stick out to me at their price tag. Um, I think uh, Joe Ingles is 4K. Uh, he's just a value option over there, shooting guard, uh, small forward eligibility. As um, If Gordon Hayward is going to be out again, I think you can go to Cody Martin, 3,500. He did get the start today. Uh, that's someone to target uh, kind of cheap. We saw an Isaac Okoro game the other day. I would be a little cautious. He's very inconsistent fantasy-wise. Desmond Bain is going to return uh, as he clears health and safety protocols. So Memphis was very appealing over the last week. Now they might not be as much. So, I mean, obviously John Moran has great upside. Uh, that's for that's for this. But the backcourt of Tyus Jones and uh, John Moran won't happen as much. Or the DeAnthony Melton and contract plays are they're not going to be as appealing anymore. Other guys I think you can go to are Zach Levine at seventy five hundred dollars as well. I think the minutes limit will go up, but keep in mind I do think Demar Derozan returns for that matchup. Yep. Let's head over to Yahoo, our sponsor, Luca 52, James Harden 49, 47, 45. I mean, again, I'm just listing off dudes here at the top, and I'm not really doing you any services. I see Chris Paul and Devin Booker at the same tag, point guard and shooting guard, $35. That's some discount, but James Harden $49, definitely still going to be a priority over on that site. Uh, looking down a little bit further, uh, I mean, there are so many options in pretty much every single tier. I don't want to say Io Desanmu. I don't want to say that. I can't do that to you, right? No, don't. He's in play. He is in play. But <laughs> I, I I won't be going there. Man, if you, uh, this is your buddy healed. No, nah, this is like much worse. Than <laughs> buddy healed's a proven NBA score at Io DeSimu. I don't think so. I think a rookie Simu, who's upstarting, showing in, that he can play big minutes at the NBA level they and should succeed. Tra- they should trade him. But you know what? They probably will. Uh, I guess this is the cue to talk about the position on our sponsor. Yeah, I'll play that free roll. Uh, they're giving away $1,000. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Harden spending up for 49 is great. I prefer going to him than guys like Luca or Trey or DeJounte Murray. John Morant, it's not going to be a hot take. The field is going to do the same thing, but I think the field is right there. The next year, guys, Booker and Levert are great. Chris Paul is also great at that price tag. I don't think i think lamello is fine it's just he's burned me so many times i still will oh okay getting burned by him yet again now if you want to spend down a little bit more there's some uh solid guard guards in the mid tier rosier at 28 is not too terrible as as eric mentioned he has been uh getting more usage offensively with no gordon hayward in the picture spending down we saw luke Kennard play an eruption game uh today now an orlando matchup $11 Kennard is pretty outstanding, as is a $12 Bogdan Bogdanovich. I think these guys are pretty solid. I mean, you can go to them, or you can get burned by $78 million man Evan Fournier, who's also $12. So yeah, there are some options you can definitely spend down. I know Reggie Jackson burned a lot of guys today, as he didn't start the second half. So, oh, yeah. And I expect him to start tomorrow. So, But keep in mind, it's an Orlando matchup where it's – pretty cakewalk and the Clippers Clippers getting all these guys back. It's tough with the rotation because Tyloo does Tyloo hasn't made up his mind yet and who he wants to play at the majority of the rotational run. It's kind of frustrating to go to a Clippers team, especially when they're uh, Marcus Morris who didn't play today. You just thought the minutes and the rotation might be a little more confined and it, and it really wasn't. Uh, Amir coffee. He's going to play minutes. Holy crap. This dude is pretty good. Uh, last shout out for Yahoo, thirteen dollars. Davion Mitchell. I listed off a number of those Sacramento spots. You can put him into the pool of guys. He's not going to project out that well fantasy point per minute rate, but you have no deer and fox. You have no Terrence Davis. That should change. Uh, let's do this. Bang! New Yahoo users get one free month of Awesome Plus Platinum with a ten dollar deposit and playing in any paid contest. It's as simple as that. And you know, we're giving a thousand dollars away tomorrow in the name of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. They are offering the lowest rake for any contests in NBA, NFL, PGA, MM, like they uh, not MMA, but they have literally everything else. NHL is what I was getting at. They have all of the lowest rake contests that you can possibly find in the industry at their site. I don't know what you're waiting for. Go over and play at Yahoo, especially new users, because you get this lovely promotion to get every sport we offer behind the paywall here at Osmo. Uh, for the Osmo Plus package, you'll get that for a month. So stop guessing, start winning, but join us through Yahoo, sponsor 
of the NBA Slate Starter, and we appreciate them so much for their generosity and also just having the most forward-thinking, uh, player-friendly contest that exists in the industry. There we go. To the forward spot we go. And again, I do really mean that. Thank you so much to them. Let's talk forward here. Top end, Giannis is probable. He's back. We want to probably be looking at rostering him on a Stars and Scrubs slate at 11-8. Then Demonis Sabonis, he's got the Q tag next to him with this ankle. They said they was going to miss a few. I don't know why he's questionable already because I would assume that means more than like the three games I think he's missed so far. Even though it feels like the Pacers are on every slate, they weren't on today's. But uh, theoretically, you know what I mean? But it really begins. Pascal Siakam, if there's going to be no Van Vliet, there's going to be no Scotty Barnes. I don't know what those, their statuses are going to be. Even if, he, if even if they are there, I know Pascal Siakam is a guy at 8,900 who needs to garner attention. Ryan, you were dead right about him yesterday, coming into today. How do you feel about your boy Pascal Siakam once more on Wednesday? No, she's going to Siakam regardless if guys are in or out uh, at that price. So obviously, you would prefer if guys are missing, but if guys are in, I do think he'll come in a little bit low-owned. Matchup versus Chicago. I, might, I don't mind going to see Occam at all, but top end to, uh, top end to forward. I mean, there's a Giannis, uh, 11, five, 11, eight on DK. Always got to have interest in a guy like him uh, when he touches the floor, just because the upside of 75, 80 is on the table for him. I know a Cleveland matchup is a little bit more difficult than other ones, but it's Giannis. He is matchup proof as it gets the next year, guys. Uh, Jimmy Butler looks pretty good. I know it's a Knicks matchup. It should be fine for Jimmy buckets. Levine and DeRozan. I prefer uh, DeRozan to Levine as DeRozan should be full go while Levine is still coming back from an injury and potential some sort of minutes monitoring, minutes limit for uh, Levine. Super elevated Chris Middleton. I would be shying away there. Uh, going down a little bit more. Evan Mobley is a little too expensive now, 8100 uh, if you're looking all the way down, we did see Dean Wade start and play really mm -hmm. well uh, in terms of fantasy production. I think I'll shy away if he's going to be super popular. There's a good chance he will be. I might. I would rather spend the extra 1200 or the extra 100 for guys like Cam Johnson and Bruce Brown, respectively. Those guys make a lot of sense. Um, long shot tournament options in this tier. Uh, I, I think it, Tim Hardaway Jr. is not the craziest thing at 4,300. It's a great Portland matchup. We saw Terrence Mann start with no Marcus Morris. He's $3,700. Um, Cody Martin and Charlotte did start with no Gordon Hayward. So there's some value here to help us jam in the Harden and the uh, Giannis plays of the day on DK. So this forward spot, it seems like more of a spend down than a, a spend up so far. But Ryan, Dean Wade is going to project to be like 7, 8x. Well, who gives a shit? When you're 3,100, you're going to need on a 10-game slate where there's going to be tons of value, you need 30-plus out of your guys. And Dean Wade doesn't feel like a 30-plus guy, right? Well, yeah, 30 plus, uh, I guess we got to uh, put it into context. I do right. think if you're playing long, like the big tournaments on DraftKings, the 100k to first, that's when you want to be a little cautious. If you're building like a cash lineup or something, I wouldn't fault you for right. going there. Or a small field like, um, I don't know, people play the 47-man field tournaments or the 39-man fields. And you fall on a Dean Wade there, that's fine. But uh, I think on big tournaments, if you're trying to win something big, you, you, I think a guy like Dean Wade is someone you should be avoiding in long shot tournaments. I am right there with you. Again, I was bringing it up just as a sarcastic point. Where, Well, I'm, I, it's just something that I brought up today where it was just like, we can't play certain guys on this slate because they, I mean, do you want to take some shots on some 4k guys or, you know, 4,500 guys that can maybe go for 30 in that regard? Sure. But like there are so many 3k guys that are projecting out better and it's just really hard to talk yourself into certain guys. This is kind of the opposite of that, where it's a 3,100 guy that'll probably be somewhat popular because he played 35 minutes and then there's that and, probably find other paths to go go up to those 4k guys that can actually go for 30 but uh let's jump over to forward over on FanDuel. Giannis there 11 to james harden <laughs> small forward eligibility that's always fun demar Derozan 9k there after his surprise scratch ex expecting him to be back and ready to go here jimmy butler 8700 middleton 8700 he's been playable even with Giannis in some of these spots it's pretty crazy dude just puts up 40 plus every single game now as consistent as he can possibly get Tough Cleveland matchup, but don't really care. I mean, there's a chance Jared Allen might not be there, so we'll get to that one later here. 
Uh, lots of intriguing uh, Toronto pieces, depending on news. Uh, you're going to want to play Gary Trent again at 5K on FanDuel. You're going to want to play Scotty Barnes if he's in at 6,200. OG and Anobi, 6,800. That's a wait and see with Toronto. But what stands out to you at the forward spot over on FanDuel, Ryan? Yeah, looking over there on FanDuel, I mean, spending up, I mean, there's Harden with small forward eligibility. You can see how the unique roster build to get if you're going to spend up with him at the small forward spot. There's Giannis and there's Siakam. I have interest in both. I like Siakam at $8,900 yet again. Now, going in the next tier, Jimmy Butler and Porzingis. I really like Porzingis' matchup against Portland. He lit them up last time. Without Luka, I believe he dropped a nice 50 spot, 50 fantasy point spot in like three and a half quarters. So uh, Portland is someone I think you can definitely target. Granted, Portland was decimated with COVID, as was Dallas, but Porzingis always has upside, and he's been playing pretty good ball of late, as the whole Dallas team has. Uh, and kind of a dark horse team out of the West at this moment. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. helped to the locker room with a leg injury. That's devastating for that Dallas team and some of my great showdown lineups. But you know what? Dallas on this slate, just pointing it out. Dorian Finney-Smith playing big minutes already. Anybody benefit from that? Yeah, probably Reggie Bullock will That's immediately the guy. Be- benefit from that. But um, Reggie Bullock is a DK kind of like only play where you get three-point bonus. We might see some Josh Green uh, get in the mix. Uh, that's really about it. I, I don't know what the likes of, I don't know what Sterling Brown status is or Theo Pinson, but really tough to pinpoint what Jason Kidd might do, but it seems like immediate beneficiary Reggie Bullock will be in there. Uh, really unfortunate to see Tim Hardaway go down like that. Uh, but uh, looking at other guys in the forward range, small forward, power forward guys, Evan Mobley is great at $6,900. I think we can continue to go to him. I think he's priced a little too cheap for his upside on FanDuel. Dorian Finney-Smith, $4,300 in a Portland matchup is fine to target. Now, we saw Kessler Edwards and Emory crack the rotation today. They're just value options in Brooklyn uh, to go to. But outside of that, if Gordon Hayward plays, I think he's pretty exciting at $5,800. But I'm not sure what the minutes will look like. I do think they want to be very cautious. Another guy who really broke off today is Isaiah Hartenstein. Uh-huh. He's $4,200. I think you can sprinkle some of them in in a Portland matchup. Yeah, he started to play a little bit more here of late. Um, he He's had like low teens minutes uh, leading up into this and then played 25 today, popped off against Washington. They were a bigger front and, you know, obviously they have however many bigs there in Washington. So it made sense. And Orlando, pretty similar when you have a starting rotation of Wendell Carter and Mo Bamba. So I think that makes some sense. See if Mo Bamba gives it a go. He's questionable coming into this game, I know. I think it would be better for Hartenstein to get him out there, but I bet he plays regardless. So maybe not, don't need to overreact to anything there. Going to forward over on Yahoo, top end. We've got Giannis 56, Jimmy Butler 43. Huge discrepancy between the two, but you know, it's it's just against New York in a slower pace game with Bam. I know that they're at home, but Jimmy Butler, this is probably the least enthusiastic I've been to play Jimmy Butler here in the last however long. Maybe that's a reason to still click on him. Uh, his price cha- uh, price tag hasn't changed, even coming off of a 50, 58 fantasy point explosion over on Yahoo the other night. Lots of mid-range options. I think Evan Mobley, even at $31, will garner some attention if Jared Allen's out. I think we should be looking at uh, getting to some Wendell Carter if you have no Mo Bamba there at $26, and maybe even regardless, there are a zillion pieces from Toronto. My boy Chris Boucher let me down today. Uh, he's still salvaged, but like 32.9, you're kind of hoping for around 40 plus. You needed 40 plus on this slate, is probably the right way of looking at it, but I don't look at that as a failure. And then Boyan Bogdanovich, and that's a guy for Utah that can always knock down some threes, gonna play low, you know, low minutes there in the in the 30s. They've established that Hassan Whites, I can actually play some decent minutes. Eric Pascal backed up the five there. But Bojan Bogdanovic, I think now that he'll be back uh, in this game after taking the night off yesterday, as in Monday, so two days off, he'll be ready to rock. Uh, what stands out to you on Yahoo? Yeah, guys, you should uh, potentially consider playing in that free roll. I think Jimmy Butler's outstanding at $43. Uh, forwards always seems like a spot. You can definitely take your chances in the mid-tier or below. I think targeting a, a targeting a ten dollar Kessler Edwards all the way at the bottom isn't crazy. 
Uh, other guys who have upside, I mean, keep an eye on the Utah situation. I know Rudy Gay disappointed a lot of people, but $12 Rudy Gay has the upside to uh, be pretty productive in minutes played. Well, I know the minutes have been all over the place and the production has, has been as well, but I, I, I don't mind going to him. Uh, we saw Kelly Oubre should get more minutes um, with the if there's no Gordon Hayward. Uh, I, I was pretty aggressively going to him today. Uh, obviously, we didn't see as many minutes go to him. So it's a tournament option there. Kelly Oubre has the upside. I, don't, I like the matchup against Indiana as well. Now, you touched on Bogdanovich. I think he's pretty exciting at $21. On the other, Yeah, I think also going to uh, Wendell Carter at 26 mm-hmm. is pretty solid. He stands out to me, uh, and I, I like taking some chances with uh, Wendell Carter as well. Another guy who should play a lot of minutes and is kind of the definition of tournament guy. In a Brooklyn matchup, I think Aaron Gordon is someone we can go to. I, we'll see what Will Barton's status will be, but uh, Aaron Gordon is someone you can definitely uh, take your chances on in a Brooklyn matchup for sure. Yeah, he played good today, I know, from the get-go. Um I don't know what that fantasy total ended up looking like, but I know that he was somebody that had a really nice first half. And if you didn't go for 45, you basically were irrelevant on this slate. It's kind of a weird thing to say. So I don't know if he got up to there because I didn't see him near the top of any major lineups, but uh, still really, really nice outing. And you got to look at it relative to a normal slate, which is maybe what we have tomorrow should still be semi stars and scrubsy, but like nothing like we had today with new Orleans. That's for sure. Uh, and having everybody pop off. Let's jump to center. Let's round this out. Again, Yahoo, free roll. Go check it out. 1K Osmo Slate Starter Podcast. That is the thing you want to be clicking on on the main screen there. Go check it out. Promise it's fun to win free money. Uh, Nikola Jokic, 12-4. It's really strange not to see Joel Embiid alongside him on a slate. Wouldn't you agree with such things on that? But yes, Nikola Jokic, 12-4. Going to be popular up there. We've got Siakam. Big drop until you get to the next uh, guy in 9,600, Nikola Vucevic there, coming off of his best game of the entire season. No doubt about it here, but played 39 minutes against OKC. They needed all of them in a one-point win. If you're not going to have uh, you know some of these other guys back, that would be one thing, but I just don't think he's remotely in play here on this slate with DeRozan expected to be back here. So you know maybe that's just all a moot point. Maybe more fan duel applicable, but... Looking down here a little bit further, Nurkic is now down a sub 8K, and he still has a ceiling regardless of any kind of leveled out performances because of CJ McCollum. I think he'll still have a ceiling. We've got guys like uh, Wendell Carter Jr. You can play there if there's no Mo Bamba. But Hassan Whiteside, 6,600. We already got the word that he will be ready to rock and that no Rudy Gobert tomorrow. He played 33 minutes against Phoenix. Exact same matchup, round two. How do you feel about Hassan Whiteside's sub 7K? <sighs> that guy has been really frustrating. Uh, but I, I think you can go there uh, in moderation. Not the most exciting play. We uh, He's just not playing as well in this Utah Jazz system. But he, he's okay. I mean, I, I rather would want to spend up uh, to guys like, obviously, Jokic or Giannis or Nurkic. Uh, those guys make a lot of sense. Even Siakam has center eligibility. But I expect Whiteside to be people to go to him, at, even at that price tag. I just don't know what the minutes will always look like with him. And he has the upside to put up 50. So that's the thing that you have to keep in mind when going to a guy like Whiteside. Guys who are priced around him, Daka Pertl in a Memphis matchup, um, a Bobby Portis is priced around him, uh, Clint Capella is priced around him. Wendell Carter Jr. is priced around him. So it's always interesting to see uh, high-owned guys and see what guys are priced around him because that one flip is all you kind of need uh, to jump people in tournaments. So there are some guys who have uh, upside around him, so I have no issues if you don't want to play white side uh, on tomorrow's slate. Maxi Kleba, the guy is the epitome of a tournament play. There will be one game he drops 25, another game he'll drop two. Uh, we're in the process of witnessing the two game. Uh, we might get the 35 game tomorrow against Portland. So he's cheap at $3,600. Harnstein's a $3,500 guy. Zubach also I like at $4,900. Uh, but will there be enough value to jam in Nikola Jokic like there was tonight? 
Uh, we shall see. Uh, Goga Batadze, 6,500. I like going to Batadze over wide side at this moment, but uh, that can change. Yeah, and Rashawn Holmes is going to be one of the most popular center plays on the slate. 4,500 for him. He's going to be crazy popular, right? I agree. I think so. Uh, we might even see a guy like uh, JaVale McGee get – oh, no, JaVale McGee, I believe, is out tomorrow. So Yeah, he already uh, got ruled out. We've got him out. We've got – uh, all the other guys. I mean, Cam Johnson, forty three hundred on on DK is kind of the main. Oh shoot! What does that mean for Bismack Biombo? Oh yeah, no, Bismack Biombo is going to be the chalk of all chalk. Fifty five hundred, and I'm going to play Jalen Smith instead. Thirty six hundred. I've come this far not playing Bismack Biombo. We just play Jalen Smith in this spot, right? Right? Or does he play forty know. minutes? I, 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 I'm tired of it. That guy needs to get PED tested. I just do not believe what's happening there. He hit his prime, like <laughs> being out of the league or something. The guy, he, I knew he was a lottery pick, but damn, I've never like seen like this out of him. But well, he was a picked up on a ten day contract, so I don't think anybody had seen this out of him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be on a damn ten day contract. Uh, now he's not. He got paid. Not the bag, just money. Decent money. I'll take it. I don't know if Ryan would. DFS is more profitable than NBA basketball. Better in your joints, too. But 5,500 there, Bismack Biombo. I think that that's just ridiculous how highly owned he might be tomorrow. Very, very intrigued to play Jalen Smith in a spot where he's played like zero minutes and could play like 10, and I'm going to cry. All right, to the center spot over on FanDuel. 11-8, Nikola Jokic, Gobert out. Demonis Sabonis. Uh, questionable Fooch. Uh, I think he's probably good to go. Yeah, he's probable. I already talked about him. Julius Randle, 8,600. Nurkic, 83. Uh, Jakob Pertl, 7,800. Really, really kind of inflated up there uh, over on the old FanDuel.com. Capella, he's played 25 minutes back-to-back. I still don't know about 7,700 unless we can start seeing 30-plus minutes. He's the kind of guy who can get there, but John Collins in there next to him, pretty tough. I mean, we've got Zoo up to 6,400. <laughs> no thanks. Biombo 6,300. Crazy how popular that could be. But I'm looking down here a little bit further. If Mo Bamba plays, 5,600 is a really nice tag. And then 5,500, Hassan Whiteside, and 5,500 Goga, if no Demonis Savonis plays, will be the chalk of all chalk at the position. How do you view those two, Ryan? Yeah, that's going to be very interesting to target uh, those guys at that position. I mean... I like going to Goga at that price tag, uh, but if you want to spend up, I don't fault you to going to a Porzingis or a Nurkic or a Jokic, but I, th- I do think on a 10-game slate tomorrow, I do think people will, would want to save down somewhere so we can go to a Harden, and I, I think that's going to increase a guy like Hassan Whiteside's ownership to quite a bit. So I got one more guy, too. 4K Mason Plumley. We saw PJ Washington not return. He played 32 minutes, I know, tonight, which is the most minutes I've seen out of Mason Plumley for a long, long time, going back to like his Denver days. PJ Washington got teed up and ejected. Oh, that was different than an yeah. injury. Oh, that piece of crap. He was in this lineup that was smashing on DK. And then I saw he was at he was at and that's that. Yeah. So he and was Harden and Bead. Oh, it was just disgusting he was ejected um and Lionel carter 7k pretty exciting as is his teammate mo Bamba. so we shall see what the situation happens there uh the cleveland milwaukee game there's gonna be it's a kind of an interesting matchup for both of them and i mean both play really good defense so a couple of those guys might be good in that game jared allen 7600 mm-hmm. i want to yeah. He's coming back from a uh, potential oh no, sickness, I think. So Sickness, yeah. And again, I don't even know if he plays because that popped up today that he's questionable. Something tells me that he just won't play tomorrow. Well, he, didn't play the, he didn't play Monday night either, right? So uh, Right. He yeah. did not play. He yeah. didn't play Monday He was night. out. I, but I'm saying that I thought he was going to just be fine, and he popped up tonight on the internet. Oh, uh, yeah. So he might be dealing with a late. Um, bug or something, winter bug. But I think Kevin Love is the other guy. Uh, he burned me as I didn't go to him. Will I let it happen to me twice? <laughs> You're gonna play 5700 Kevin Love. That's that's probably a good idea if they're gonna give him 
any sort of minutes because he's just such a good fantasy point pro net producer. At this point, if you're Cleveland, why are you playing him 23 minutes a night? Just play him 30 a night. You're already paying him. What are, what are you going to do? Move him? No, no. They're going to use him to win a playoff series. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, so you just you think he's just on ice? Sorry? You think he's just on ice right now? They're just not going to play him like 30 minutes, period, for a long no, time? He does have an injury history, so I think... It's true. Uh, just it's why kind of... If it's working, why like break it, right? Yeah, I suppose. I just, I mean, I watching him in Minnesota put up twenty five and twenty five was really fun back in the day. Those yeah, are the yeah. small things I remember. No, he's a great fantasy uh, player for sure. Uh, I, this is probably his last season in Cleveland, right? Yes, probably. So, I mean, he's been great. He's having a lot of fun. Uh, he's had he's having one of the most fun Cleveland years outside the year they won the championship. So. Oh, winning is fun. That's that's news to me. It, it would seem like I would want to be in Cleveland losing basketball games. I mean, this is the <laughs> like no thing has been without LeBron James ever. Sure. It's true. And he's, he's been there the whole time. Yeah, so. However, he's making a crazy amount of money. It's hard to feel bad for him. Uh, center, and now I really don't feel bad for him. He is on a good basketball team. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they can stay healthy now because – They've already lost so many pieces at the guard position, and they're they're thin. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, $57. Pascal Siakam, 39 at the center spot on our sponsor, Yahoo, where you can play that free roll. Just throwing it out there. Uh, Nurk, 38. No thanks. Bam Adebayo, 34. Probably no thanks. Looking down to Whiteside, $21. Really sticks out to me. Kevin Love is 18. Next to Bismack Biombo. Woo! Direct pivot series. Oh, that's that's great. Or season. That's what I meant to say, like the kids do. $17 Mo Bamba is intriguing. Obviously, I just made a fool of myself talking Mason Plumley when it should be PJ Washington at that $15 number here. And then Precious Achua probably would become my favorite slate, uh, my favorite center play not named Nikola Jokic at $11. Yeah, I'll go right back to the well once again in the event that you have those guys out, but then. Scotty Barnes, please be out, and he'd have to start. So, talk to me about Center on Yahoo to round it out, Ryan. Yeah, Center on Yahoo is uh, definitely the position where I think if you can find a way to jam in with Nurkic or Siakam, Jokic is very expensive there, but he could put up eighty in a Brooklyn matchup. So, I and then people are going to go to the jumps of value and guys like Batadze. I like at fourteen dollars. I like going to ba, what's his name Bamba at seventeen. And then Whiteside at 21. Uh, those guys are all great. I think you can do a double center for sure. Marcus Aldridge, he was pretty solid uh, in the first half, kind of cooled off in the second half, I believe. So he's also $17. There's a lot of great options in the mid tier, so you don't really need to force up and spend up for Jokic. Love it. Ryan, quick and efficient, sub 40 minute, 10 game slate analysis. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that, my friend. I know, I know you want everybody to go play over at Yahoo. There's no doubt about that. We have the 1K free roll. Go check that out. Uh, there's people signing up for it already here. So go get that free money if you can. Uh, any final words for the people? Yeah. Uh, good luck, everyone. It's a 10-game slate. And enjoy the free roll. And hopefully someone takes it down. He's Ryan. He won't get burned by Kevin Love again tomorrow. I'm Eric. I am totally going to get burned by LaMelo Ball again tomorrow. We'll see you guys later.